views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Voices of Women is a top radio show that gives voice to the personal stories of women. It will inspire women and enlighten men to follow their dreams and create positive changes in their lives. Whether the audience listens to best-selling authors or a layperson like themselves, they'll realize there are others with similar experiences and feelings to their own. This show will give women tools they can use every day, which will empower them to step out of their boxes and create the changes they desire in their life. Chris inspires women to find their voice Voices, speak up and become leaders of their own life. Everyone has their gifts to share with the world, and it's time for women to work together to bring honor and respect to the feminine voice, which is within all people, men and women. Topics include personal growth, spirituality, creativity, leadership, and divine feminine. Now here's your host, Chris Stanis. Welcome to Voices of Women. So now we're at our solstice weekend, so summer is officially going to be here on Monday. Just um, putting out the question, what are you going to do to bring in the solstice energy the longest day? And this year, it's a rare occurrence in that we have a full moon and the solstice happening the same day on Monday. And that hasn't happened since 1948. And I read that they call it a honeymoon because the, the moon's going to be low. And uh, with all the humidity and the light coming through the air, um, denser air, it makes it an amber color. So you might want to check out, look for the moon when it comes up over the horizon. So um, today I'm going to be speaking with Kate Otto. She is the founder and director of Everyday Ambassador, a network for young individuals who are currently pursuing or having completed an international service opportunity an overseas fellowship, and an and or a travel experience. She is also a global health consultant who has worked in Indonesia, Ethiopia, Ghana, Tanzania, South Africa, Mozambique, and Haiti for several development institutions, including the World Bank, USAID, and various grassroots organizations. She designs, deploys, and researches innovative mobile phone-based technologies to improve health service delivery in areas of HIV, AIDS, care, maternal and child health, and nutrition. She writes for Huffington Post and the Christian Science Monitor, and she is the author of the new book, Everyday Ambassador, Make a Difference by Connecting in a Disconnected World. So welcome, Kate. Thank you so much. It's great to be on the show. Yeah, great. Okay, I just want to I just want to note I'm hearing some background noise uh, clanging on, on your phone, I think, um, just to be, to be aware of that. Um, okay. So um, through through so I, I said you know through your work the Global Health Institute your AIDS organizations you work for the Clinton Global Initiative University um, you've seen firsthand how our technology addicted world um, our ability to meaningfully interact with one another has been decreasing and is decreasing mm-hmm. at a rapid rate so you've been yeah. kind of sounding the alarm through this book and the work you do you're sounding that alarm and so and and then and so, so today we're going to talk about that and talk about solutions that you know that's um, i imagine why you wrote the book so first yeah. let's talk let's talk about uh, tell us what is an everyday ambassador sure so uh, an everyday ambassador is basically a person who is willing and excited about bridging barriers, bridging divides between people. The the thesis of the book Everyday Ambassador and our whole organization is that usually the root at what's wrong with the world and the problems of the world are that we're not able to really communicate with one another, understand people from different backgrounds and different life struggles and experiences, and that in order to really change the world and have a positive impact on the world, it's not about having the most money or the most innovative idea. It's really about are you able to build strong relationships with people who might be very different from you? And in that skill really lies someone's ability to truly change the world for the better, for the better. Mm -hmm. So it's about building relationships and and communication, I imagine. So what inspired you to to create this movement of everyday ambassadors? Well, what inspired me to create it is my own mishaps in, in international travels and work 
Um, yeah, I'm American, and I, uh, from a young age, really had a desire to want to travel the world and help make a difference in the world. Uh, and I started doing that by taking short service trips to different countries and you know, building a house for a homeless family or volunteering at an orphanage. And these are all things that people, including myself, do with really great intentions and a really positive heart. But then the more I did them, the longer I was staying in countries and learning about the issues in those countries, the more I realized that these kind of short-term efforts um, oftentimes can hurt more than they help communities. They oftentimes have unintended negative consequences. Um, oftentimes there's kind of a egoism at the center of them about the person getting an exotic or interesting experience rather than truly contributing. Um, and I realize that it's it's much more difficult to actually make a difference uh, in a place where you don't have an ex you don't have a background there. You you didn't grow up there. You don't really know what's going on there. You might drop in for a short period of time and just kind of hear a short summary and think you have the answer of how to help. Um, and so for me, it was my own journey and kind of realizing, you know what, I actually want to make sure that what I'm doing is responsible, actually effective, actually making a difference. Um, and so in my journey to write the book was a journey of reflecting on the different travels I had had, things that people taught me in different places. Um, and then also stories that other people shared, as, as people can read in the book. There's a lot of stories in there, not just from me and my journeys, but from other other people as well. Mm -hmm. Well, what are some of the common mistakes that people make? You know, I mean, I think and there's probably yeah. even some assumptions that we go in and expectations that we we think we want to do good. And like you said, sometimes it's more harmful. Yeah, well, I think sometimes the the, the kind of primary um biggest thing that we usually overlook is that um, e even if it seems like a black and white issue that we can kind of put in a solution and help, usually that is not the case. Usually if a group, uh, you know, a community still struggles with dirty water or hunger or no schools or whatever the situation is, it's probably not because someone didn't try. It's probably not because there wasn't someone who really cared very much. It's probably quite complicated. Um, and it re really requires time, energy, and as we've already mentioned, uh, relationships, getting to know people, getting to know uh, people who've been working on this for a long time. And I think that it's not that you can't do good things on, on short trips. It's not that we shouldn't be going and doing this. It's just that when we go, uh, whether it's abroad, and I also want to say even if it's in our own country, even if you're just in America somewhere in a place that is not where you grew up in your background, um, really the key is to get to know a community. And I even say to people, if that's all you've done at the end of one to two weeks is, got, is made new friends and gotten to know people and not contributed a single thing, you've done far more positive than you ever could have done in the absence of, of making those friendships and relationships. That's really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And, and that sense of um, respect for them, showing them mm -hmm. that, you know, that they're valued and that their voice matters. And, you know, if we go in as the experts, like you say, are they even mm. going to listen? They're, they're not going to receive you. Right, right. Yeah, this idea of expertise is so interesting because, you know, in a Western way, we're kind of taught that expertise comes from a college education or from a certain level of skill training. Um, when really, when you're talking about solving some of these problems in the world, um, expertise has a lot more to do with uh, your, your experience and experiential education and people who have lived and gone through certain things that, you know, are far more expert in the situation than someone who might have studied it in a textbook for many years. Mm -hmm. Have you found in your experience of like working in a village that there's, that do you look for certain people that you know would be a key for you to um, learn about that? community, that culture. Um, I would think that would yeah. be some of the learning experience of like figuring out who yeah. you go to. Yeah, for sure. I mean, kind of just in general, getting to know the dynamic of the place where you're going to, to participate. So in some cases, there might already be established community leadership, and it's really important that you liaise with them and, and connect with them before even going anywhere else. Um, in other places, that might not be the case. So it's kind of just getting to know the specifics of the place where you're going and whether that's that someone else has already gone there and can share that information from you or whether you just ask a lot of questions when you get there. There's all sorts of ways of, of learning that um, so that you avoid this idea of kind of stepping in and saying, all right, I know all this about this topic and I have this idea for you and this is what I want to do. It's more like what do, what do the people there want? What are people's needs? What are people's interests for their own community? 
what is their plan and then how can you help them with their own plan? How can you kind of be in the background um, being supportive rather than trying to be the star of the show? Mm -hmm. And you shared on one story in your book where you were working in Indonesia and you probably, you probably were there long term, but 20, 20 people arrive to be there for two weeks and have had no planning had no sense of why they, you know, what they just want to go in and do all of a sudden, you know, in this two week time, do great work and make an impact, make a change without any knowledge of what was needed or, or expected or what the community was even about. Right, right. Yeah. And in that situation in the book, um, I was working at a HIV AIDS center. And so it's a great example where, um, you know, you really should know the specifics of the place. So, where I was working in Indonesia, the HIV epidemic there really was mostly spread by injecting drug use and and a lot less by any other means. And so the kind of plans these young people had was just like, quote unquote, AIDS education, just kind of like a very broad thing um, in schools. And there really wasn't a plan for it. And I don't even think they realized that the, the, the solution they had come up with uh, did not at all match up with what the problem actually was. And had they instead just kind of spent a week getting to know people and getting to know the issue and then, you know, maybe a week at least saying, oh, what are you working on? Maybe can we fundraise for you or can we find resources to support you? Um, kind of that more, more of that type of a thing than trying to come up with the answer themselves without having researched anything about the problem. Mm -hmm. And it may not even been those, those, um, I think I'm gathering their students or young people mm -hmm. um, as much as the organization who's sending them not being, you know, for they they need some preparation from the the organizations they're sending them to. There, there's some accountability there. Well, we're going to take a break now. You listen to Voices of Women. We'll come back and talk more with Kate Otto. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Chris Stanis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Do you want to achieve your goals? Do you want to strengthen relationships with others? Do you want to improve your financial status? Colette Marie Steffen is partnering with Mark Kettenbach to bring you an energetic upgrade online experience launching in April. Unfold and develop your full potential. Visit energeticupgrade.com today for more information. That's energeticupgrade.com. The doctor is in. Tune in to the hit show, The Psychic Love Doctor, with host Deborah Lee. Deborah's life affirming, highly perceptive reading method has taught Deborah how to zero in on specific problems with relationships, career pursuits, and current roadblocks to success and happiness. Join Deborah Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific and for a special broadcast the second Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Sky Siegel co-hosts one of today's most popular psychic shows, Angels and Answers, with Artie Hoffman as she communicates healing messages from the spirit world. These messages can be astounding, enlightening, and life-changing. Born with the God-given talent of inner guidance and the amazing ability to heal, Sky has healed thousands of people. Schedule a reading with Sky now. Call 908-500-1474 and visit skyofangels.com. Hey everyone, meet my friends at the Maka team. The ancient Inca root vegetable Maka is known worldwide for its huge array of health benefits. 
As a family-run company of true market specialists, the market team is here to bring you the best maca the Peruvian Mountains has to offer. Yellow maca used to promote endurance, vitality, fertility, hormone health, and much more is on sale now. I love it. Visit themacateam.com to order yours now. Themacateam.com. We're back on Voices of Women. I'm Chris Stanis, and we are um, learning about how to be an everyday ambassador and how we can make a difference by connecting in a disconnected world. Um, I just looked at what I typed up. It said discounted world. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of interesting because <laughs> there's a little discounting there. Um, but, you know, so you talk about being disconnected and our, you know, we have all this technology and we have all these cell phones and there's all this texting going on and, and texting mm. Texting rather than picking up the phone and calling someone, you know, it's just so easy and quick and, and there's advantages to that, but there's, there's disadvantages. And, and I would yeah. imagine, and, and it's worldwide. I mean, you know, I was just in Cambodia and, you know, cell phones and texting that's, you know, it's what everybody does now around the world. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that there's definitely some, you know, wonderful things we can do with technology. And we could talk about that after a lot of my work abroad has been designing mobile phone-based tools that can help with, with healthcare and things like that. But, um, but yeah, you bring up a great point that we have all these tools to be able to connect with one another, and yet all too often we end up using them to, to be disconnected. And what I, I mean by that when I talk about it in the book is, you know, think about any time this week that you've been out and you're talking to someone, but they pull out their phone to send a message while they're talking to you or that you're at a meal sitting around the table and at least – half of the people at the table, if not everyone, is actually just on their phones as they're eating their meal. And kind of the idea of physically being together in person is often compromised by the presence of a device that allows us to connect to other people. There's no longer kind of that sacred space of just you and another person. Um, and, you know, we all do. I do it for sure, even after writing a book about how much I don't like it. Um, it's very tricky, but, you know, it's it's being able to kind of recognize in your life when you're doing it and then um, and then change that. And, and there's there's those obvious things of, you know, literally being on your phone um, when you're with other people. But what I go into in the book, too, are the, the less obvious ways um, that are kind of conditioning us to be disconnected. And probably the most tricky one that I've come across and experienced is the idea that empathy is a really important um, quality to have to connect with other people. And you would think that in a digitally connected world will have more empathy than ever before because we can see the points of view of everyone in the world online much easier than we ever could before. But in fact, if we all think about our own Facebook pages, when people say things that we don't like, or if people post something about a politician who, who we don't agree with, we either hide them from our timeline or we unfriend them and we kind of curate spaces for ourselves that are more like echo chambers. And so we actually become more polarized and empathetic in that digital space. And, um, you know, it's not like the digital tools were designed to do that. It's just human nature, how we've ended up using it. But, you know, being aware and awake to these ways that we might be using technology or allowing it to use us to, to disconnect. Well, it's interesting the point you make because, like, because then we we're in this uh, field of people with like minds, and and how can we make an impact on people of what we're feeling or what our knowledge is if we're only talking to others who think like us? You know, we're not right, having, exactly we're not having a dialogue so that we can have understanding of why the other person thinks differently, and and then that tolerance and and um, and and like you say, empathy that that is lost there and so then it, it polarizes us you know we've got it's us versus them even more and and when you think about the biggest issues even just in our country today they're really divisive issues and if you think about it there, there's just not conversation on it anymore people yell at one another people will throw talking points at one another but there's not really on on facebook on, on twitter some of these platforms are just not built for the same type of discussion you can have in person with somebody. And so um, not to say that they, they can't be used for that if, if they're thoughtfully put to use. And I think um, there are organizations who, who care about doing that. But I would just say for the most part, um, you know, we've kind of gotten used to this idea of 
the us versus them mentality. And it really, like you said, it doesn't really advance your point or advance your um, your goal for society if you're just going to be upset with everyone else um, and pushing your viewpoint. What, what we really need to do is figure out why does the person whose viewpoint I oppose, why do they think that? What are the roots of their concerns? Are some of the roots of their concerns really valid? And I can actually understand them, even if I disagree with their uh, outcome decision. Um, and then finding those spaces for common ground, even if they're small, but at least finding those ways to connect and so you can actually have a discussion about something. Yeah, some of the great um, um, conflict resolution um, workshops or events that you have are places where bringing two opposing people together, finding the commonality. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Dane and Perry is a man, he passed away, uh, I don't know how long, 15, 20 years ago, but he did this, he would go into conflicting countries, you know, like Irish and the British and the um, um, Israel and, and Palestine, and he'd put the um, woman together and the man together, he realized that he needed to do something different, and so he put the woman together in the room and the men together, and then they, they found their common fears, their common loves, and they ended up being able to have, you know, make friendships and work through these painful issues and differences yeah. because they found their commonality, and, and we all have that. We're human. We, there is always commonality, and, and, and having that curiosity and that exploration of, gee, why do they think that way? You know, and how, how can we achieve that empathy? Well, one of the things you do is practice um, in your book for this whole issue of being an everyday ambassador is four core values. So I'd love for you to share mm. what those are and examples of how, how that is used in your, in your work of creating everyday ambassadors. Yeah, absolutely. So the four core values of everyday ambassadorship are empathy, patience, focus, and humility. And, you know, there's lots of important values that are necessary to develop good relationships, have good communication skills, be a global citizen. But for me, those four felt like the most urgent and important values to have in a digital world. I think those four are the most at risk of being lost in a digital world. And so we talked briefly about empathy and how we have to work really hard to build empathy. Um, a great example of um, a, a partner organization of Everyday Ambassador who employs this. It's called um, America's Unofficial Ambassadors. It's a group that brings young people abroad, mostly um, to Muslim-majority countries, and has them engaged in short-term service projects. But, you know, the, the point of it isn't really the service project that's being done. The point of it is to have, you know, an American who might have perceptions or misperceptions about the Muslim world um, and someone from that country who might have, you know, certain perceptions or misperceptions about Americans really spend time together, develop friendships, develop relationships so that you're building that idea of stronger global citizenship, P people from different countries who might not be leaders or, or, you know, actual diplomats or ambassadors, but it's almost more important that they're everyday people because they're going to be going back to their small towns or their small campuses and able to share their experience of who they met and how human they were just like them. And so, you know, building that empathy of, you know, despite these stereotypes we have about other people, here's all that I learned that we have in common. Um, you know, patience is one that we talk about a lot, as you can imagine, because in a digital world, everything happens so quickly. You can order your dinner in two minutes. You can, um, you know, send off an email or a text really quickly. And when we get used to that happening in our life in all these other ways, it can be really difficult to adjust to the fact that change doesn't happen quickly uh, and change does not happen in one week or two weeks or even one year. I know I know you said you were involved in some really great work in Cambodia with you know building schools and helping to strengthen the education system. I'm sure that you can talk a lot about how important patience is and really sticking to something over time, even if it's difficult. Um, I don't know if you want to share anything about that before I went on to the others. Um, well, yeah, you you are able to do only so much. And sometimes when you try to do too much, it's it can be, especially in a country like Cambodia, where it's very hot and humid. And um, the last time we went, we did a lot. And it was, I found it, it was a little stretch for us. And because we're putting ourselves into this new culture and this new different kind of climate than we're used to. But the things move at a, they move at a different pace in countries like mm -hmm. that. You know, and so mm -hmm. we have to move at their pace. We can't expect them to be ready on the dime when we're ready to go, you know. And so you have to understand things are 
at a different pace and you're in their country and you kind of have to match their pace, I think. And that's what the patience is about of mm. um, letting things flow because in the end, things do get done. Yeah, at a different pace, things absolutely can get done. And usually they get done better. Um, the The intro to the book or part of the intro to the book, I share a brief anecdote about um, when I was working in Ethiopia and I was kind of, like you said, I was rushing to get things done. I wanted to work on my own American time and my colleague who I was working with, um, who's Ethiopian, he kind of just like laughed at me and he's like, we're taking a lunch break. We're going to take this lunch break. Um, and he shared this beautiful story with me, like a proverb. Um, and, 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 you know, in brief, uh, it's that you, like a man dies and goes to, um, hell and what hell is, is a bunch of people sitting around a table full of delicious, amazing food, but, they have these spoons strapped to their hands that are so long, they can't feed themselves. It's like impossible to do. Um, the man then gets to go see heaven and it's literally the exact same scene of a delicious table of food, but everyone's eating and happy because they realize they could use those spoons to feed one another. Um, and you know, the idea of getting the, and that's very, it was very inspiring to me about working together and finding creative ways to get to know the place that you're in. Um, but just this idea of like taking the time to sit and have lunch and talk. And maybe it's not on my fast time that everything gets done, but in you know taking the break and going on someone else's time, you end up learning so much more and you end up being exposed to so much more. Um, and, and ideally you end up being able to have a better impact once you have more, have more knowledge and experience. Yeah, so true. Um, yeah, it's, and it's it's great to to learn that lesson from someone from another culture that it took you sitting through the lunch and understanding that proverb, the value of it was a great friendship was developed. You know, so yeah. there there was that that value of having that patience and learning that 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 story is great. Well, we're going to take another break. This is Chris Stanis, and we're going to come back and talk more with Kate Otto, author of Everyday Ambassador. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Pat. I wanted to tell you about a new, powerful, and compelling play by Nicholas Basile. Coming to Seattle July 7th at Cornish Playhouse, Seattle Center, the United States of China. On one hand, a dedicated American patriot who would give her life for her country. On the other hand, someone who has been battling the injustice and corruption of America most of her life. And she is as confused as any American could be about what she truly believes in. My play, The United States of China, is about the trial of Miriam Hopkins, who is a metaphor for all that America stands for. This is more than a play experience. It's a movement. It's a movement to create a new level of awareness. Knowledge is power, and we are powerful. Get your tickets today at AmericaTheStrong.com. 
Awaken to your radiant, authentic self. For over 15 years, Soul Purpose Advocate Nancy Monson has been focused on leading change in the lives of those looking to live their true purpose. She is devoted to supporting people and living a soul-directed life every day. Let Nancy help you overcome fear, worry, and doubt. Visit EverydaySpirituality.com to learn how Nancy can be your soul purpose advocate. Have you ever tried to make lifestyle changes but had difficulty following through? Imagine what it would be like to get up each morning with energy, clarity, and motivation to tackle the day. If you want to get past limiting barriers that are preventing you from living your best life, join holistic health and wellness coach T. Carrie Mitchell each month on The Dr. Pat Show. Or visit Lifestyle120.com today and start to receive the personal attention you deserve. Welcome back to Voices of Women. So we've been talking with Kate Otto and we're learning about how we can be an everyday ambassador and how we can make an impact on, on um, in, with other cultures. And um, first, before we go any further, Kate, can you give your website um, where people can find out more about you and the work you're doing? Sure thing. The website is www.everydayambassador.org. And the website you'll be able to find there, um, the book, of course, if you want to buy the book, you can get it in paper uh, back or on your Kindle or on iTunes and your phone. Um, Also, what we have there is a blog, a pretty robust blog of interesting stories from the field of our partner organizations. Um, We have over 50 partner organizations who really live the mission of Everyday Ambassador and their work, and we think are stellar gold examples of what it means to be an Everyday Ambassador um, so very inspiring stories there. Um, and we also have uh, workshops that we offer to organizations, to schools. If you're planning to engage a group of volunteers in service work at home or abroad, um, we've done that for businesses before. If people are doing kind of just community or service-oriented things, so we, we offer a workshop in the four values of Everyday Ambassador and how to employ those in your everyday life. That's great. Okay, so we were talking about that. We went over empathy and patience. And so the last two um, are focus and humility. Um, So I'd love to, yeah, let's talk about focus and how that plays as an important value. Sure, yeah. So the the reason I wanted to put focus on that short list was because what what I mean by that really is the ability to uh, resist multitasking. So uh, we all know that multitasking, uh, you know, feels good. We feel like we're getting a lot done. But interestingly, all all the social science research on multitasking shows that we end up getting less done when we multitask. And it it might feel as though we're being efficient by juggling a lot of things, but we actually get more done when we kind of just tackle one issue at a time. Um, And I really kind of experienced that in my everyday life with technology, but also in in a kind of metaphorical way with different projects I would try to work on, especially if I was abroad or doing a service project. You kind of just feel like there's so much to do. There's so much that you want to get done, um, and you try to juggle many things at once. And so the the kind of idea of being able to focus is say, you know what, even though these 50 things have to get done, I'm just going to focus on this one today and get it done and do it really well. Rather than trying to do many things, uh, you know, average, uh, getting one thing done really well. And I, I just don't think that we value that as much anymore. We kind of value the idea of someone who can – get a lot done very quickly, even if the quality of that work is subpar. Um, And I think especially when it comes to trying to make a difference in the world, it's much more important to have quality over quantity. Um, And then the the last, and I think the most important value of everyday ambassador is humility. And, you know, this doesn't mean necessarily putting yourself below people. It just means putting yourself in perspective to other people. So, um, the idea that when we're going out to help somewhere in the world or even in our own community, our own country, um, and, and honestly, even if you're not into service, even if you're just walking out in the world every day, um, the, like honoring the idea that you might not know best, you might not know everything. And, you know, we people might not realize that I, I forget it a lot, but we have come to live in a world where we're kind of 
pocket experts. Like anytime someone asks a question you don't know the answer to, you can Google it, you can look it up. And, and that's great. It's so convenient for so many things. Um, but when it comes to the idea of like being right or wrong or having an answer or not having an answer, there's just so many things that you can't Google the right answer to that you really need to be able to say, you know what? I don't know the answer to this situation. Instead, I'm going to listen. Instead, I'm going to listen and kind of hear this person out or try to understand this and not just come up with what the quote unquote right answer is. And you know, it's particularly important, as you can imagine, in, in international work or when you're working with other cultures, because as we were discussing earlier, um, so often we'll go to a place thinking that we have a certain level of expertise because of our level of education or some training we've had. Um, and really, it's more important to go first somewhere with an open mind um, and, and being there to learn, to be teachable, to, to understand um, rather than going to kind of show off our expertise or, or be act as if we're, we hold the answers or we know the answers to everything. Yeah, that's so true. Um, and um, coming from you in sort of educated country, it's so easy to do that and to think that mm. we have to have the answers so we'll even make one up. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah, know people yeah, exactly. who do that. <laughs> so what... Yeah. What do you um, suggest, you know, I, I know because you do workshops and exercises on how to bring all these values together. Do you have something to share mm. with people of how they might um, practice this? Yeah, well, I think that really the best way to, to kind of develop these values into your life um, is, all, is really just in an everyday way. And that's why I call the book Everyday Ambassador um, and not, you know, <laughs> once a year on a week vacation ambassador, <laughs> once in a while ambassador. Um, because I think that, you know, the idea is that using, being ensconced in the world of digital tools and, and this fast paced way of life, um, that, that's, what, that's what conditions us without us even realizing it to be disconnected. And so my argument is we kind of have to work hard every day in little ways in the same kind of little subtle ways to gain back those skills, uh, to, to demonstrate our capacity to connect with other people. And really, I think, that, so whether you're planning to go on a, a, a big service trip or whether you're just planning to travel somewhere or whether you don't even have any intention whatsoever of leaving the country or doing a service project, um, I really think the best thing you can do is integrate little things every day. And so examples of those are, can you walk to work without being on your phone, without looking at your phone? Um, can you sit on the subway or on the bus and talk to the person next to you instead of checking your emails or talking? Um, can you, when you get your coffee in the morning, um, ask the barista's name and have a conversation and get to know the person? Um, can you start, um, you know, people who you pass by every day in the workplace or at school, um, reaching out to get to know them and making a relationship? It doesn't, Again, it's not like you're changing the world or, or you're, you're making everything, um, you're transforming things. Um, it, kind of the point of the book is that it's not about these big, huge efforts that, that change the world. It's about these kind of tiny little ways of being and behaving in the world that end up making it a much more, um, you know, reasonable place and a much more, you know, just place for people to live. And so that's kind of where I would tell people to start. And then I think kind of like a next advanced thing is think about an issue that is related to making the world a better place. Um, and that could be something like gun control in America or racial justice in America or or something overseas. I mean, I would say stick to something that's in your own country or in your own community that is a contentious issue, something that people are really heated about. Um, and make an effort to hear someone's perspective who is different from your own. Hear the perspective of five people who is different from your own uh, without interrupting, without interjecting, without uh, insisting that your way is the right way. Um, it doesn't mean you have to agree with anyone. It doesn't mean you have to change your opinion. It just means practicing the idea of engaging with people who are really different, who might have different views or different backgrounds. And again, it's not that you have to change your way of thinking or change your belief system. It's just being able to engage um, and have a good relationship with someone, even if at the end of the day you're not going to agree, I think is an incredibly useful skill set that if everyone was able to do that, uh, we would not be seeing the types of injustice and devastation that we see in our country or in our world. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah, thank you for that. It's really good advice. And and I think on my list, I want to say, like, can you turn your phone off when you're at a meeting? I think there's this thing of importance of like, oh, if my phone rings, I've got to answer it because someone needs me. <laughs> 
someone someone's wanting yeah. to talk to me and instead of like you know what <laughs> they can wait <laughs> Yeah, and because then it then it kind of tells the people around you that they matter less and that they're less important. Yeah. And um, you know, like you just like I actually have gone in the habit now of just putting my phone on airplane mode during the day. And unless I know that I'm expecting a call or unless I know that I you know need to get some certain correspondence to do something during the day, unless it's something like that, I just turn it off. And then you know I'll spend a little bit of time at the end of the day answering messages, but I. Um, you know, it's it's so distracting, it's so distracting yes. from what you're trying to get done during the day to always be looking at your phone. It's like you have another, it's like you have 500 people sitting in your palm or something like that and you're having to attend to those things. Like the notifications on your phone, it's just mm-hmm. very stressful. It really adds a lot of stress that you might not even realize is there um, and can, can cause you to be, you know, shorter with people and less patient with people and, um, you know, less willing to really listen to people. And so... I agree with you. I think that's another great one is just, you know, putting your phone on silent or airplane mode um, when you're actually with other people and spending time with other people. Mm-hmm. So um, I want to go back to, cause you did mention this, like just, just travelers, you know, we've talked about people traveling with a purpose or uh-huh. service travel and that, but a lot of us just travel, you know, and there's the tourists that go into countries and they go on the tour buses and they just see sites. Mm-hmm. But what do you suggest, you know, for Westerns going to developing countries, cause we make an impact on them, even just, you know, with our traveling to those countries, how can we turn yeah. those into positive experiences well, for both ourselves, I mean, we want a positive experience when we travel, but for the countries we visit. Yeah. I mean, I think what's really, the, I think the same principle holds true that even if you're just there for travel and there's no, you know, service component of the trip, which is totally great to see the world, um, still the idea that relationships matter, I think, is really important because oftentimes when you travel in another country, there is kind of a middleman of either someone from your country who's arranged your trip and your hotel and the things you're doing on behalf, um, you know, on your behalf, um, or kind of people from that country who, um, are taking, are deliberately like designing a Western approach to what your trip's going to be like. Cause they know it's, it's business, right? They know what you're going to like, they know what you're going to expect. Um, and, and so you might not even realize that you're not actually getting a experience of seeing another culture, experiencing another culture, because you're seeing something that's already been filtered or that's already been adapted for you. Um, so the, to the extent that you can just meet people, um, whether it's like literally just people who you run into in a store or like a storekeeper, a store owner, um, uh, people at a, at a marketplace if you're shopping, um, it, people who might be like a tour guide, like just ask, ask about people's lives, get to know what, like what people's, um, you know, beliefs are and culture is and just yeah. asking people directly. Yeah. Um, so asking thing, questions. Well, we- yeah, asking questions and being curious. Well, um, again, we have to take another break. This is Chris Danis. We'll come back and talk more with Kate Otto. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. 
Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Get into it for 2016. Do you want more prosperity, clarity, energy, and balance in your life? Join Lynn Brown now for one of her amazing workshops, each focusing on a key part of living your best life. For more information and to register for one of these amazing workshops, visit lynnbrownevent.com. That's lynnbrownevent.com. And get into it this 2016 with Lynn Brown. Hi, this is Leslie Fontaine, and my show is Sheer Alchemy on TransformationTalkRadio.com. When we're bogged down with our emotions, the hardships that plague us in our relationships, at work, our finances, we literally can't see the higher plane where we could be operating from. Tune in to Leslie Fontaine, Sheer Alchemy on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Stanis, and we've been talking about how to be an everyday ambassador with Kate Otto. And um, that's the name of her book, Everyday Ambassador, Make a Difference by Connecting in a Disconnected World. So we were talking about, you know, tra- in traveling other countries and developing countries. And one of the issues that I you know, think comes up is our fear of, of facing poverty. And for some people, that's very difficult. And and how we how we manage that when we go in that you know because we don't want to be um, pitying them, and we also don't want to be their savior. And sometimes mm-hmm. there's you know there's that it's almost like a flip of the coin. Well, if you're not pitying them, you you got to go in and save them, and 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 that's hardly a correct position to be in when we travel. Yeah, you bring up such a great dynamic and such a great kind of struggle that um, of course someone's going to go through if they if if they haven't lived poverty and experienced it, it's very shocking and it's very disturbing to see that. Uh, and I think what's, a, you know, a first important thing for, for people to then realize, um, which I found very powerful to realize was most of the world, the majority of the world, most of the billions of people on this planet live in poverty. That is the absolute norm. And for us, anyone who has a home and has food in their fridge and who has even a little bit of a salary is really in that top one, two percent of the world. And it's really hard to imagine that even if you're like a low income um, person, you are still so much, you're still so much more financially secure than most of the world. And so just kind of realizing how prevalent that is. Um, But then, like you said, you want to find this balance between you don't want to be feeling sorry for people or saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I feel so bad for you. That's not going to help them. And the other hand, you don't want to dive in and say, I'm your savior. And so, you know, Everyday Ambassador really was created to, to help people find that middle ground which is saying, you know, to a community who might be too poor, for example, but what are your goals? What would you like? Is it that you want to make sure your kids get educated and then get jobs? So what can I do to help you with that? How can I help either fundraise or, or is it that you want to build a school or have teachers there or have a cool new technology? Like what, what is it that you need that you want and how can I help be a part of that? Um, rather than kind of coming in and saying, I see what's wrong with you. This is what I think you need to do. Um, it's just a, a flip of, of thinking about the issue. And and there might be some issues, some topics on which people don't feel any need for change. Maybe someone's happy being a farmer and that being their lifestyle. Maybe someone's happy with some aspect of what we consider to be, you know, poor or not a good situation. Um, but then there's going to be other things that they think are unacceptable. It might be unacceptable that 
they can't get health care, that they can't get an education, and those are the things that they want. So it's more about, you know, figuring out how, what, what is it that people want, asking, and then being part of that solution as directed by them rather than trying to be the director. Right. That's what you're being directed by them. And that was like when we went to Cambodia, it was a monk who he wanted a school in his village. And he just happened to meet up with the right people and it came together. And and, and then our um, Amazing Grace Spiritual Center in Seattle um, took that on as a project. And so it's their school and um, mm. and we were able to fund it, but they also have mm-hmm. to, um, for sustainability, they have to come to a point where at some point they're funding it too. But it's exciting to work mm. together and it's, they, they called it, you know, they, it, and, and I know some of the people that we've been involved with is like, is would start with um, somebody meeting somebody, developing a friendship. Or what do you need? Well, we need a well, and a well would be built. And then the next thing go, well, we need a school. And and just that that um, knowing what they need and listening mm-hmm. instead of going in and 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 like you say, just you know determining for them. Well, this is what they need. We don't know what they need and and what they're yeah, wanting. Exactly. And, and so that's great. So the other thing is that we touch on too is service work in the U.S. You know what opportunities yeah. are here. And what are the needs here? Because a lot of people can't travel abroad or can't afford to. And, and there's things yeah. in our in our own cities. We don't even have to travel. Yeah, absolutely. Chris, I think that's such a great point because there, there are huge parts of America that are just like developing countries. Um, you know, in country, really, there's parts of developing countries that feel like you're in a first world country. And so it's about kind of identifying, you know, what the needs are, where those places are. And, you know, in America, um, we have incredible poverty, for example, on Native American reservations. Um, we have a lot of poverty, um, obviously, in, in urban settings. I'm here in New York City. I, I'm working at Bellevue Hospital where we serve people who are undocumented or who are, um, you know, low income to not even be able to afford any type of insurance. And there's just there's a lot of devastation in our own country, a lot of financial insecurity. Um, there are people who go hungry every day in America. Uh, and so, you know, identifying something that in your own community or in your kind of broader community that um, that you can work on is a great idea. You definitely do not need a passport to be an everyday ambassador. It's, it's all about finding it, something that you can contribute to the world, and you, and you for sure do not need to travel around the world to do that. There's plenty of, of need and interesting things going on in our own country. Oh, yeah, and interesting people. And One of the things we've done in Seattle and in, in a, an area that I live in is there's a um, – the, our church, several churches in the area are providing a, a meal, rotating the churches, a meal every Sunday evening for the homeless. Um, mm. And and then there's a homeless shelter, a shelter where people can go do their laundry and take a shower. And, you know, that's been built. So there's lots of places where you can go volunteer um, to help mm. out with those, you know, go help cook. And, I'll, you know, it's just inquire, find out, do a search and see what the needs are. And, and what resonates with you and that, and that, you know, yeah. And that can throw you just as much into um, fear of, you know, that, that fear of being faced with homeless. Cause you know, they're by the grace of God go, I, you know, and I see signs from the homeless say, you know, this could be, you know, there is a thing that this could be you, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. a, a homelessness is increasing and uh, people are in situations and instead of judging like, well, they're just not trying hard enough and, and it's their fault. They can't find a job. We don't know what their situation is. That's again right. that asking that question, exactly. finding out exactly you know, what, what is their story. And I, and I would love to to emphasize what you just said. We we so often, without even realizing it, make assumptions about other people and who we think other people are, what they stand for, what they've done in their lives, or what brought them to the point they're at of of maybe a particular misfortune. When we have no idea, we have no idea what they've gone through, what their life is like, and so. As we've been discussing on this segment, you know, ask, get to have a discussion with someone. And even if like making making a difference in one person's life, investing yourself in one person's life and helping one person to reach their goals, to succeed, to to move on is is a huge treasure. And, and I would say it's even better than the idea of kind of, you know, light, lightly helping, you know, a thousand people like to really be involved in one person's life. And we see teachers who do this every day. We see nurses who do this every day. Um, and even if you're not in a profession of service like that, just the idea of kind of investing yourself in another person's life to be supportive to them, to be helpful to them, um, really ultimately is what makes a difference in the world. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today and sharing your perspective and all this and the work that you're doing. Sure thing. Yeah, Thanks for having so, me. It's been yeah. 
So uh, I advise everybody to go to her website, everydayambassador.org. And I think there you, you probably have the organizations that you recommend that people can get involved with or find out about. Yes. Yeah. On, on your website so you know and it's good to get that recommendation because there's lots of organizations out there and 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 you want to pick a, a good one for one that works for you but also the ones that reputable and is really doing the work and you're, you're putting you know good money to to good resources so check out the website at everydayambassador.org well we're at the end of our show and thank you for listening today and i'm um just want to remind people about women of wisdom that's my um foundation that I started back in 1998 in our conference. We're planning our 25th year. It's going to be a big year this February for our conference coming up in February. And also my book is the it's a, a capturing of what woman wisdom is about and the many diverse ways of exploring the, diver, uh, the divine feminine through many voices of art and poetry and stories. It's woman and wisdom empowering the dreams and spirit of women. And it's a, it's an award-winning book just, you know, because of all the, the um the people that put their energy into it it's you know i've written parts of it but many 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 voices and so i encourage people to to check that out and uh, just go to womanofwisdom.org to find out what womanofwisdom.org is, is about and um you can sign up for our newsletter okay so next week we are going to be having a discussion with normandy ellis and nikki scully on the egyptian mysteries and that's it for the show and i hope everybody has a great solstice weekend You've been listening to Voices of Women with Chris Stanis. Tune in each Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time for Voices of Women Today. Radio with Chris Stanis.